What's up, everybody? It's Dave Drakes with The Collective Experience, and we are back for the very first Foul Plugs of 2021. I've got Mr. Big MX Radio himself, Brad Gebhardt. He's on. You know, yes. It's the first one we to do it big. And, of course, I've got my main man, Manny Fresh, on as well. What's going on, gentlemen? How are we doing? What's going on? Things are awesome, man. Three rounds in. We've had three different winners in both classes. Tons of storylines to talk about. Dave's keeping us to a very strict time budget so let's get after it <laughs> okay so like you said we were in we were in houston we had three in a row that was pretty cool um whole new shakeup. no a1 we have h1 now what were you guys' thoughts on going from a1 to houston was it, it was a huge mix-up manny i'll start with you what, what was the vibe what did you think about it as opposed to going to, to uh, anaheim I think, honestly, uh, it was pretty cool, honestly, to, to start the series off somewhere different. I think it, it gave the, the series a kind of a change of pace, something new to look after, uh, new dirt, uh, new environment for everybody. So I think I think it was pretty cool. Like, um, so I wouldn't be surprised, like, if going forward, they kind of incorporate something like this. It doesn't have to be necessarily Houston. It could be somewhere else. But, you know, maybe trying to start the series off somewhere else. I agree. I, I, I love the shakeup. You know, I, I'm not a big huge fan of doing Anaheim eight times in a row like we always do but uh I thought it was cool Brad what were your thoughts kind of watching it on the broadcast for the first time in over 25 years the Supercross series started somewhere other than Anaheim California it was totally wild and I I really I liked the the move obviously it was it was due to COVID but I think COVID although brings a lot of shitty things it brings a lot of good things as well in the fact that we were forced to have change we were forced to get out of our usual little happy little spot of, of always having Anaheim one. And that was as, as, as normal as it gets. Right. It, it was, it just felt right. Cause it had always been that way. Uh, but now it gives us an opportunity to move things around. Maybe we start the series uh, in Orlando. Maybe we start the series in Tampa or somewhere else uh, along the way. Of course, California always provides, fantastic weather and the great little nucleus yeah. for all the teams to be down there but i have no problem starting the series somewhere else and uh, i thought it was a fantastic execution and we were treated to great racing so what can you what can you uh, complain about exactly I, I feel the exact same and i'm, I'm pumped i hope like you said we, we keep seeing this rolling forward new venue shaking it up great for the sport so moving on uh, we were treated, like you said, Brad, to some great racing. Uh, me and Manny, our eyes were bolting out of our head for the first couple of races. We had probably the most stacked field in history. Brad, you are a motocross historian uh, to the fullest <laughs> degree of the letter. Um, do you think in your professional opinion, sir, that this is one of the most stacked fields that we've seen in history? Because to me, I can't think of a time when it's been more stacked, when we've had literally 15 guys that could win a race. Well, as owner and co-host of the fourth most popular podca podcast in the motocross segment on, uh, thanks to my friends over at Facebook, Big MX Radio, I am happy to uh, tell you that never before in the history of Supercross has, after three rounds, the first nine riders been this close in points. It's never happened before. So if that's evidence of, uh, of parody, then I don't know what is. And the fact that we have not... 10 not 12 but 15 guys in the 450 class that have won titles titles yeah. on a 250 that is absolutely bonkers and you have at least four guys that have won a championship in the 450 class all vying for wins all vying for relevancy and in a lot of cases vying for their careers going forward guys like justin bogle and, and this that and the other thing it's really impressive it's really exciting and i know manny fresh has been talking about it as well we're treated to some fantastic racing and a lot of it has to do with the so many years of all those uh the, the kids that come out of these facilities so much talent so much speed and it's it's culminating in the 2021 supercross season that is just action-packed and full of talent Oh, 100 percent. Manny, I'll, I'll kick it off to you. Probably the most stacked field in both classes, right? What, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, it was crazy. I remember like we were talking about it even when we were just looking at, you know, that first A group of practice. It was like almost everybody that went out there has a championship, whether it be in a lights class or in a 450 class. And it was just amazing literally to see like the class that was that stacked. It was like everybody out there has a championship, everybody out there has wins pretty much. So it's just like, 
I, I would get nervous even just trying to qualify if I'm looking at, if I'm like one of these, you know, yeah. guys on the cusp. It's like I, I, the guy who, who finishes 15th could win or probably has won. So yeah. it's, it's just literally like somebody's going to have to have a shitty night. And that kind of like just as a fan, that makes for an exciting experience for me. Well, 100%. Yeah. We, uh, we, we didn't uh, know where to look. Rock Tickle knocking down podiums. Podium yeah. performance in Toronto. Yeah. He's 17th place guy right now. Yeah. Crazy. Like, what? No. Yeah. In practice, we had no idea where to look. We're like, oh, this guy, this guy, no, this guy. Like, they're literally battles all the way back to, like, you know. Minutes. So, okay, yeah, Brad being top keeper, um, keeping us on track. Uh, 100% right. Let's go. Um, so, uh, my next my next topic, I'm going to start off with Manny because this is his boy. We yeah. had the rookie sensation Chase Sexton get uh, ejected off the motorcycle, running a, an amazing race on the HRC Honda. I know you felt in your heart, Manny. What were your thoughts about that? And can he still sal salvage a good rookie 2021, preferably maybe outdoors? What are your thoughts on that? Super bummed on it because I think we kind of got to see necessarily like his outdoor talent and everybody was kind of aiming at seeing what he can do in the Supercross. So like from a from a standpoint of we know Chase Sexton is going to be good outdoors. We know he's he's good technically that I think everybody kind of wanted to see how he falls in with the paddock, especially, you know, with Dylan actually starting to ride his 450 career. Now, everybody always wanted to compare those two and kind of see how they were going to shake up in the 450 field. Mm -hmm. And Chase, as expected, was starting to look really good. And so yeah. the question now was always, oh, was he going to possibly get a win this season or not? And now we have that. What if? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I agree with you. It's a bummer to see someone with so much potential, you know, actually fulfilling that potential early and having it go awry. Brad, what was the fundamental mistake you think that that he made um, going through there? Was it nerves? Was it bad line choice? Was it just an accident, this fluke thing? Um, you know, and, and to that note, like, you know, can he still salvage uh, a, a good 2021 season? Uh, not maybe not super cross, but maybe looking out outdoors. Well, we're going to talk about it later on in the uh, the video, but I think the I don't know what's a bigger obstacle right now in Supercross, lappers or sand in Supercross. It's yeah. an absolute melee every time it happens. Like three guarantees in life: death, taxes, and someone's going to lose the front when it comes into into the uh, the sand. That, his name is likely going to be Martin Davalos. But yeah. on that Tuesday night after the race, I had to check for my wallet because we got fucking robbed. <laughs> robbed from uh from seeing chase sexton a, a shining star a guy who was about to just like like be a huge thorn and whoever wanted to win this championship side and he honestly was was making a great uh like effort for it in himself to, yeah. to take that in his rookie rookie season but uh i was disappointed to see him get hurt can he come back and still have good races yet to be seen on what, what what went on with the the MRI and this that and anything mm -hmm. I think he's going to miss at least a few rounds and that few rounds is going to be a lot of rounds given the fact that we're racing three in a week these days mm -hmm. eight days we've got three rounds um I see him focusing more on finish coming out in the outdoors and being really strong that way Agreed. uh not to say that field is not going to be any less stacked it won't have Brayton but you know yeah. like it's every, not everybody else. <laughs> and um, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, but uh, a, a bright future ahead for the kid. And he's got some serious speed. That's three minutes. I, I, I agree with you. Thank you again, Mr. Timekeeper. Um, and to that same injury list note, we got to add the young, uh, the young dude on the Cowie, Austin Forkner, for what seems like the 10th time going down in practice, knocking himself out of championship contention at this point in a series that's so short. Brad, I'll start with you. What does this mean for Sexton moving forward? Is, is this mean super Porter. detrimental to his career? Can he rebound from this and still have a good season? Or can we kind of write this guy off as, I don't really think he's going to be anything more than the guy that gets hurt? You do mean Forkner, though, right? Forkner, yeah. Did I say Forkner? Yes. You said Sexton when you're like... Oh, so sorry, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. It's all we're good. Going, I, thought, I thought Forkner, maybe yeah. you'd run repeat. Um uh, the, the the CD was skipping or something like that. Wow, I just dated myself. CDs. Um, but uh, either way, uh, this is not an MP3, people. But um, super unfortunate to see, see Austin Forkner go down. He's extremely talented. Uh, I think he's been known and, and has shown a tendency to have spontaneous deviation. 
Where, and, and every time that happens, he, he tends to get injured. The guy is clearly made out of fucking glass. And when he hits the ground, he breaks. Yeah. Um, whether, and like, it's because he has that speed. He's loose. He's fast on the motorcycle. He runs with all kinds of confidence. Um, but the, the reality is and there was another guy that used to go really fast with the number 259 on his bike. When he hit the ground, you're doing it at a very high rate of speed. I don't even care if you're made out of concrete. Things are going to go wrong. And um, unfortunately, he hasn't been able to put a full Supercross season together. Even his rookie campaign, he ends up going down on the whoops and, and injuring himself. Um, it's a comedy of errors that has basically equaled out to uh, us again checking for our wallets, robbed of, of the talent that is Austin Forkner. Um, I don't know, it, it, between him losing this season or like, or Justin Herbert getting his way with his chick for a couple of weeks there. Oh. Like, it's just no, like no one, no, oh. things are not going Austin Forkner's way right now. Uh, oh. If you don't know about that, go check out TMZ. And in, in all seriousness, we have not yet gotten to see what a full season of healthy Austin Forkner looks like. When we see that we're finally going to get, um, we're, we're, we're finally going to get, just like see the potential that's in there. But uh, until he finds a way to stay off the ground, we won't see it. I'm sorry for taking up two minutes and 30 seconds of that garbage. <laughs> Real quick, Manny. Um, is this a maturity issue with him? Is this just a, a, fun, a technique issue? What's the problem with Forkner, man? I don't know. It's hard to read because it's like literally like when it happened, I remember telling you, I'm like, we've seen this movie before. Literally, I felt like it was yeah. literally like an exact replay happening again and again. And it's just kind of like, you know, the first two times you like, you're gutted for him. And this time it's just like, come on, dude. Like, it's like. Yeah, yeah. either his knee is on backwards. His wrist is doing a W. I think he did a shoulder, a uh, spleen, uh, like. Everything. But then again, it's just like, it's like, you're not going to tell him to slow down. Because no, he won't feel like, the way to do that. You can't ride at 80%. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So it's just like, I don't, I don't know what the fix is for this. I, I have to, I, I have to agree with you. Um, and, you know, to the complete opposite end of the spectrum, he's got a teammate in Joe Shimoda, Manny, that looked extremely good. You and me were like, bro, is that Forkner? Like, nope, Shimoda. <laughs> we did not expect Shimoda to come out swinging like that and to look so good on the PC bike so soon. Manny, what what do you think of Shimoda? Is this like a is he gonna like take over and go beast mode on the whole season? Can we see a win this year? What what's your thoughts? I don't know, but he looks super good on that bike. I remember H1 when he come comes around after the whole shot, and I remember tapping you and I'm like, is that Forkner? <laughs> and it's like I had to like triple take looking at the number, and I'm like, oh, like shit, that's Joe Shimoda. He looked really good, really comfortable. Um, he seems to be gelling well with the Cowie. So honestly, and it, and it, and he proved that it's not a fluke. You know, he's hanging around up there. It's not like he's he's coming out. You know, one good round and then he drops back to like 17th the next round. He's hanging around in that top five area. So it's like he looks good. He's found something. Uh, I think he's got his confidence, which is really good. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to see, you know, if he can, you know, maybe steal a win or something like that this season, which would be, I would be pumped for. Oh, I think we all would be. Brad, what are your thoughts on number 30, Cowboy Rider? Pass the wasabi because fucking sushi is hot right now. <laughs> it is so good to see this guy come out. Yeah. And he, like, he, he's, he's got a snarl on underneath the helmet. Yep. You watch him in qualifying, he gets pissed off when someone gets in his way on his hot lap he's always trying to go faster he put up he was one of the only guys to put in, in i believe it was the second round on the tuesday he put in a 41 and he went out again to try and beat that time and was absolutely going bonkers when someone pulled out the yellow flag the kid has a ton of heart mm. he's got a chip on his shoulder and i think he's a little bit unassuming to a lot of his other competitors that he doesn't communicate with obviously there's still a little bit of language barrier there yeah. but dude this kid is a fucking badass and he wants to win i think a lot of people are calling this a three horse race joe shimoda is gonna give all three of those guys everything they can handle and honestly i can't wait to see it that kid is going to seriously I, I would like to see him uh to win a race before the season's out i don't like him for the championship colt's my guy there yep. but honestly a, a guy that people aren't talking enough about joe shimoda i like some, i like sushi i agree stamp it swaggy j is uh making a name for himself in 2021 coining that 
um tra- changing things around a little bit but this go, is the uh, oreo line <laughs> good lord uh, let's go from the top five to the top uh top winners over uh the houston stint we had christian craig jet lawrence and of course colt nichols your guy um brad who looked the best brad who out of those three guys in the 250 class looked to have the 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 most uh, momentum, the most style on the bike, the most comfort, the most speed. Who is the who's the one guy that stood sh- head and shoulders over the rest? Honestly, I'd have to give it to Colt Nichols. The guy got progressively better. He went three, two, one. The only time that he got in, on the third spot was the fact, like the only time that he he didn't beat both of those guys is when he got beat by Christian on the first night. He beat Christian the second night. He built, beat uh, he beat Christian the the, the on the, the third night as well fantastic he gets faster all the time he's better in traffic which is going to be a problem given the fact that they lapped up to 13th twice and uh i think that uh he's got he's got speed to burn we have never seen much like austin Porter, we have never seen a, uh, a colt nichols at full pace for an entire season if we get that mark my words you'll see a one on the front of a star racing yamaha at the end of the season and it won't be christian Gregg's. Ooh, manny what are your thoughts on it man my i'm with i'm with him all the way up to the point of colt staying healthy honestly like i agree if colt stays healthy he has the speed to do it that's not not a question at all but it's literally like he's another one of those guys that's like he has a get off every season and it puts him out whether it's a wrist or something and it's and so like literally that's what my eyes on. it's just a matter of I hate, I don't want to jinx him, but it's like a matter of when is he going to have a get off? And, and if he's going to, as long as he doesn't get seriously injured from it, I think we'll, we'll, at the end of the day, I think we're going to see a star bike win it regardless. So yeah. it's just a matter of, in my book, it's either going to be him or Craig. I think Craig has the experience to actually, you know, ride this thing in. Like we all know that Craig's going to make the full season. So if, and if these other, other two guys don't throw it away, then, then we're going to have a battle. But if one of them, you know, we're, we know it, we can see it. One of them will come in and put a 17th in or something like that and completely screw themselves. So I think as long as they all kind of like don't have anything catastrophic happens, it should be a tight race. I have to agree with that. I think Nichols is definitely rolled the best. Traffic looked way more in control, did not make a single He's mistake. Better late in races too. Like yeah, the second yeah. race was a complete runaway. We didn't really get to see what Jet can do or would do late yep. in a race he's completely by himself like he, yep. like he could have dropped his lap times by five seconds no one was catching him but both races on the tuesday and the uh and the saturday and the last saturday in houston late in the race colt was able to navigate the, the lappers and just be racier late in the race and you could see that frustrated the hell out of craig like he's I think he's a little bit bummed that like the the fitness might not be there. And it's not just the fitness. I think it's the mental fitness, the ability to late in the race when you're fucking tired. Can you still make your way around guys and and find the the right line? And actually that's one of the things that's kind of the X factor. And the thing that we're going to talk about last is when it comes time to lapping guys or when it late in the race, when you have to make split decisions that are make or break it for your race. Certain guys are amazing at that. The number two, some guys have a really uh, an issue with it. The 94. We're going to get to that later on in the show. That's called teasing. That's called teasing, Dave. You know nothing about that shit. <laughs> you got you to tease him a little bit. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree with I agree with, with you guys 100 percent on that one. Um, let's uh, let, let's push things over to the 450 side, if you will. Um, I want to talk about Barsha, Eli and Webb, our three 450 winners who all in their on their own right looked phenomenal on each night. Um, I'll kick it off to you guys. Um, who looked the best? Who who was head and shoulders above the other guys? Who looked more comfortable on their ride? I know I have my pick in Mr. Justin Barsha, who looked freaking good in the gas gas. You don't have Barsha. You wrote it down as Baraka. <laughs> oh, dude, okay, well, in the notes, yeah. I'm. Who cares? <laughs> no, no, it's I Baraka. think Justin Baraka I, I is... <laughs> Justin Bark is the man. Now, uh, I, I think Barsha looked the best out of all three guys. They were all flying in their own right. Um, Barsha looked phenomenal. The guy was on the gas, on the gas gas. Um, he was he was battling with Roxon. Let leave me alone. Let me say my freaking puns. <laughs> he was uh he was matching Roxon speed every lap, which uh, in case you guys are not aware, really freaking hard to do 
from start to finish. And I didn't really see a misstep from him. So I have to go with Barsha. Um, I'll start off with you, Manny, for this one. What, what do you think? Who was the who was the best guy? I think, as usual, Barsha was really unreal on the first round. Like, we were watching it, and he was sprinting that whole race. Literally, we were watching him, and I was waiting for him to kind of settle in, and he yeah. never did. He never did, it yeah. Seemed like he was sprinting the whole race. Yes. And so that was just... That was unreal the way the way him and him and Kenny kind of ran away from everybody like that. That was just a clinic that first race. The one thing I did want to point out is that even looking at H3, Cooper Webb pretty much just stole a win and he's not really cooking up at 100% right now. And that's pretty scary to to think that he got one out of the way early. So he put one in the bank and he's hasn't I don't think he has everything figured out yet in terms of his bike setup or comfortability or he's not, he's not, you know, playoff Cooper Webb yet. No, so, yeah. Fuck. yeah. So I, th- I think that's pretty scary though, that he put one in the bank early. Damn. I didn't even think about that. Fuck man. He's coming through with a, with the with a charge. Okay. That's a solid point. Brad, what are your thoughts, man? I think these shows on a routine basis are just like further evidence that Dave doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about 80% of the time. Oh, but- like when the fat when the two of me and Manny just like like make our arguments and completely change his mind because we've actually have like sound analysis, then like because otherwise Dave is basically like I like Barsha because he's got a cool bike. And that like, wasn't even what I said. That, like the same he way might. that my chick like picks guys for Pulp MX Fantasy, he has a dog. Like oh my god. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I think you got to give it to the guy who's got the red plate that hasn't even won a race yet. How about how about if not for uh, lapsed traffic slash poor, poor racecraft late in the race and, and a, a, a penalty, your points leader by a, eight points, which is big, a bigger gap than that even separates the top ten, would would be Ken Roxon. He'd have an eight point lead on second spot. I think he's been sneaky fast. He's been most consistent, and consistency in this in the sport wins championships. I will, however, give Tip of the cap to one uh, Manny Fresh, who brings up Cooper Webb, who now has that little bit of a smirk, and that smirk turns into a shading grin. And when that grin comes to the races, bad things happen for the rest of the series and the rest of the guys in the 450 class. Because when when Cooper Webb is feeling it, he has that like he's he's like that little bully on the playground. Yeah, he 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 fucks with guys' heads. He he's out there. He's got the swagger. He's he's yeah. talking. He's he's yeah. he's in uh, Eli Tomac's head. Um, so those two are, are probably my one A and one B. There's a reason why they're they're one they're one and two in the championship right now. I yeah. give the the nod to to Roxon only for the fact that he's he seems to be a little bit more like at one with his bike a little bit, and uh, I think that he's got that thing a little bit more sorted out even given the fact that Cooper literally said on this last Saturday, I have no idea what's going on with my motorcycle. I let my team set it and I just forget it. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty, that was pretty badass. No, you guys yeah, that was. Pretty, like, uh, I <laughs> make really good points. You know, I just like Barsha because his bike's pretty. Um, there were a lot of fireworks that happened this past Saturday. Everyone knows what I'm talking about the controversy between the win that, uh, that Webb took and how it was a little bit taken away from Roxon because of one Dean Wilson who was a quote unquote lapper. Well, actually a real lapper. When you don't, when you think about lappers, you don't think Dean, Dean Wilson, um, who, uh, you know, kind of got in the way of, of Roxon and, and dethroned him a little bit in, in terms of, you know, him t- taking the win away from him. Um, let's start with one of you guys, obviously, you know, where, where I stand with this stuff. What are your thoughts? Was this a little, was Switzerland. this, was, was, was this, was this, uh, uh, was this I, stuck I saw, in neutral. I saw people saying it was intentional on by Dino. I saw that it was maybe team orders from uh, KTM factory. I saw that Roxon was from wrong. Austria. You got a headset. <laughs> I, I heard that. Uh, yeah, Roxon was in the wrong for uh, for not uh, you know thinking uh, thinking ahead and having enough foresight to go around. Um, I heard that Webb is to blame for um, you know capitalizing on a win that shouldn't have been shouldn't have been his, which is super weird. Goes against racing. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what 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 was your thought on this, Brad? What, what what did you make of the whole incident? 
first of all, I don't even think Dean speaks Austrian. If he's getting messages straight from overseas, like there's no way. Dude, come on. You should have read the dude, comments. They were dude, insane. I, I, didn't, I, stayed out of the comments. I didn't even I didn't want to see humanity go to another low after the 2020 that we just had, or you just see like the worst of people. Yeah. I didn't want to see that that still exists here in 2021. It, it, it bums me out to see it happen. A guy who has, has fought for wins in the 250 class in, in Supercross. He has an outdoor championship. And literally, like, two, three years ago, he was the people's champ on a privateer Husky. And literally everyone was going to, like, like sell their grandmother for 10 cents so they could give it to fucking Dino so we can keep racing. Yeah. And now everyone just piles on because it's the cool fucking thing to do is tell him, him he's a piece of shit on the internet. Good for you, motocross fans. You're awesome. Like Dean Wilson was trying to win, trying to trying to move forward in a race. He has he has a guy who won or was on a podium earlier. This uh, in in Justin Brayton, and he has a 450 champ right in front of him. That's who he's worried about. He's not worried about the guys behind him. And if you want to talk about being aware of flags, talk about Ken's four uh, four point penalty because he wasn't seeing flags. Not a, not even not even a week prior to this absolutely ridiculous that people would, would think that, that is like an intentional thing from dean like i don't think it was necessary but good on him for apologizing i think uh, that, that apologize that apology could have been in an airport where like between professionals that didn't need to be on social media yeah. but uh, i think dean gave the the trolls a platform to go into the comments give him a big middle finger and then he can delete that post when he's done Honestly, I was disappointed to see it. Yes, it cost them the race, but I'll ask you this, and, and Manny, you can chime in on, on this. In that corner where Cooper comes across, if if Ken holds up for a half second and then doubles into that rhythm, are we even having this conversation? Thank you. Thank you. you know, like if he just if he just he just stops up and goes, same thing with Cade Clayson in the LCQ. If he just holds up and then blasts through, no problem. He, he doubles in, triples into that, that the next corner. No problem. It would be, a, we would even not having this conversation. We'd be moving on to the next topic, but we have to hash it out because that's not how it played out. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts, Manny? I think like, I, I agree with Brad on, on, it's literally like a little bit of it was, I think Kenny panicked when he hit Dean's wheel, like uh, on that last, on, going over, right before he goes into the corner, oh, he hit he, on the he wall. His wires crossed. Yeah, he hit Dean's wheel, and then he went into oh shit mode. He's like, no, fuck it, I'm about to lose the race. And then he's trying to figure out a new way around. Yeah, and he's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, and he's in the middle of like, fuck you, and still trying to not let Cooper pass. Yeah. And all of that's happening at one moment time, and then it just all fell apart. And at the end of the day, Cooper knows he got a gift. So, like, if anybody's saying, you know, this is team orders and things like that, no. Cooper got a gift. He's a racer. He's like, oh, you're fucking up? I'm going to just take oh, this. Like, yeah, exactly. no, no. Yeah. As anybody with their right mind on who races anything would do. Yeah. So, I don't think it's anything more than an honest mistake. And I think Dean was honestly, he felt shitty for it because he was caught up in the middle of his own race. And we've all done it. We get tunnel vision when we're in the middle of our own situation. We're not really worried about what's going on about us around us nothing nothing more than that i don't think people who like to make their own conspiracies out of things and make them deeper than they really are but i don't think it was anything more than that it was cool that he did apologize not that not saying we needed that yeah. they could have had a man-to-man -man conversation behind closed doors but i guess that's a part of being a celebrity when you're uh one of the fastest racers in the world comes with the territory but other than that i didn't take anything more serious into it i'm pre he, pretty sure he got cursed out by kenny it was over with after that. Like, that's it. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I think that the, both those guys are professionals. They put this behind them. And, uh, like, I don't think this championship is coming down to three points, to be honest. I really don't, given the fact that we've had just so much swings in, in points one week to another. Uh, but, of course, point all, all points are super important. Um, but, yeah, that being said, I, I think that the, the, both the guys are going to move on. And, like, literally a week from now, when, like – 10 other wrenches have been thrown our way. We will not be talking about this. 
uh, whatsoever. It'll it'll just be uh, one of the many storylines of 2021. Dave, I know you want to get into some predictions before the end of the show here. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to say I can guarantee you that Dino is going to do some sort of funny viral thing with a blue flag or something like that, and everyone's going to laugh and forget about it. So I agree with you, Brad. Um, yeah, we, we've got Indy this weekend. Uh, moving on from the whole Houston deal, uh, we're back towards uh, you know the uh, America's heartland, um, the Midwest, and my other states. Yeah. Uh, for state to get, however you want to put it um and i know a lot of people uh, especially racers they love the dirt they like the venue cool city um you know we always get a good group going there um what are you guys' predictions for uh the podium in each class you know again there's a lot of parody uh, it's super stacked it's almost hard to make these predictions but seeing what we saw in houston what are you guys thinking in terms of podium finishes manny i'll kick it off with you 250 and 450 what is your guess 250 i really Hopefully, hope we get to see that battle. I want to see the Christian Craig, Colt Nickel, Jet Lawrence battle up front. I want to see what they do. I want to see them, you know, get a good start and really kind of battle us out, kind of somebody really solidify themselves and say, hey, like, I'm the fast guy now, like, to really, I'm, I'm going to take this thing over with. So, I, podium-wise, I think, I think Colt steals another one, honestly. Um, I think he gets another one. So, I will go Colt, Jet, Christian Craig. Um, and with 450s, I think Kenny's going to come out fired up. Um, and I think Kenny gets a good start. He's going to look to run away and really make a statement um, and not really leave it anything up to chance anymore. I think uh, sometimes like he goes in a little bit of cruise control and then tries to manage the race closer to the end. Um, I think if he gets out front, he's just going to punch it all the way through uh, to really just put one in the bank now. Um, so I'll go with Kenny, Webb, Tomac. Okay, solid pick, solid picks. Uh, Mr. Brad Gebhardt, what are your thoughts going into this weekend's race in uh, Indy? No, I want you to go first because my predictions are going to be right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go first. 250, I like Nichols. He's got confidence. Um, he's one of those guys that really, really thrives on confidence. I like him for another win. Um, I can guarantee you that the the tight points battle between Christian Craig and Nichols is going to light an extra fire under both their asses. They're already super fast on great equipment. He makes with the red and, plate. And Never teammates, teammates. I don't think that they're going to give Jet Lawrence a chance to, to go anywhere near the top of the podium. I think Jet right now is battling for for second or, or sorry for for third um i unless barring a, a, a mistake from those guys i just see those guys being so freaking like i want this title i i'm so close to it i'm on the best bike best team i can't let my teammate beat me they're they're stuck in those top two spots i do however um saw most of getting a little bit more comfortable I'd say he's 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 there for a sneaky a sneaky podium finish. I don't think he's gonna get a win with those guys. Like I said, Christian Craig and Nichols are too fast. I do think one of these indie rounds we're gonna see Moseman on the podium for sure. Mark mark uh, mark my words. I also say for four fifties, uh, I agree with you, Manny. Kenny is uh, on fire. He's fired up. He's ready. He's going to uh, do really well. I see him getting a um, a win. I also see Barsha reasserting himself. That guy likes this type of dirt. He likes the softer stuff in Indy. We saw him, we saw him always in practice. This guy gets super steezy and sideways. He gets he has fun there. So I see him doing really good. And you cannot count out Eli Tomac. Yeah, Webb is fast. Webb's got it. Eli is going to have a sneaky ride and come from the back and win one of these things. Um, so if I have to if I have to say it, I'm going to say it's going to go Kenny Barsha Tomac for a third. Brad, Fair it's enough. on to you. It's on to the master predictions. Fair enough. Well, aside from Dave's analysis where he bases more most of his research in guys who do sick whips during practice, here's some sound <laughs> analysis from somebody who's actually watched some races and is going to give you some actual, like, factual reasons as to why guys are going to uh, do really well. What do we know about Indy right now? It's fucking cold there right now. The, it, there's gonna be tons of moisture in the soil and that track gets beaten up at the best of times we've ne never been to indianapolis in january in supercross ever ever it's never happened before i think we're gonna have a, a track that breaks down like never before who usually struggles with in adverse track conditions that they've never seen before 
rookies, guys that have never been there before, guys like Jet Lawrence, guys like Ma- uh, Max Boland. Uh, I, I honestly, even even guys like uh, Joe Shimoda, I still think that he's going to have some speed late, later on in the series. Yep. But like you, and I, have, I actually have a reason for this, is that I think that that's going to be one of the reasons why we see Michael Moseman take that third uh, place on the on the 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 podium. I think that he, his high water mark for the season is going to be a third, but he's going to nip at the heels of the two Yamaha guys. Yep. And honestly, another thing, reason why I think the Yamaha guys are going to be one step ahead is because they've raced there before. They've they've ridden these types of tracks before. Of course, both those guys normally known as more of uh, a West Coast guys, but they've seen really beaten up tracks and especially later on at the second and third Indianapolis, the dirt is going to be absolutely hammered and it's going to be soft. It's going to be ruddy. And I, I, I suspect that uh, that means um, probably mistakes for a guy like uh, a guy like jet, maybe even a guy like, uh, like, like Max as well. Same thing for the four fifties who I ask you, Dave, who, who's been known to really pull out some like kind of out of left field, really good rides when the track is absolutely butt ugly. It's shit. I don't know if you know who I'm thinking about right now, but he had an amazing race in Oakland, 2018, where he just took the win out from underneath Ken rocks and last lap. Uh, Cooper Webb, wasn't it? No, oh, that was 17, 17 was, Cooper was- Webb was all over, uh, was all over, um, Tomac again a super ruddy track that, yeah. like, that broke down like crazy I believe AJ Catanzaro got landed on that day um uh because I have a great oh. memory but yeah. by the, Josh Hansen right that's right yeah. that's right um but the year the the year following the track was an absolute bomb hole everywhere there's craters there's there's um landmines going off and the, the the man who was able to go through it all was jason anderson i think he has one of his best performances of the year in indy that Oof. best performance but i don't i'm not calling a win okay i think his absolute high water mark his ceiling for the season is going to be a third i think that he gets it at one of the indy rounds mm-hmm. also guys that go really fast when it's when the the, the conditions are subpar or not ideal cooper webb who mm-hmm. i think like if you don't know what's going on with your motorcycle, it's probably better that way when the, when the tracks yep. all over the place, because not you're not your trying to make it do one yep. specific thing. You're not hammering your, your head into the, the wall saying, exactly. why doesn't it do what I'm, what I, I expect yep. it to do. He doesn't know what his specs for his motorcycle. So he's just going to yep. go out there. He's got yep. that, that chip on his shoulder. Yeah. That thing's kind of heavy, but he'll, he'll pull it along. Anyway, that thing's got lots of power. No problem. I think he's going to be in the, the top two spot. I also think that, uh, that, we're going to see a steady dose of Eli Tomac, especially because we saw him at the top step of the, uh, of the, uh, of the times for uh, time qualifying at the last round, which means I feel like he's ready to push his motorcycle, to the absolute limit that spells problems for the rest of the series, rest of the, the guys in the series. So I, I would just think those are my top three guys rolling into Indy uh, is Tomac Cooper. I expect good performances from Anderson and I already named him earlier in ken rocks and he's gonna have uh he's gonna have good rides as well those are the top three guys i love it um great great analysis there i have one more for you guys we can't do a foul plugs without doing our coveted drip check uh manny i'll have you go first who had the swaggiest guy in houston (laughs) oh i i already called it the the alpine star stuff it, it seems like Every every time they come out, they're doing something creative with their gear, which is what I like. They do they're doing like some of the one off gear sets, and I think that's what's part partially separating them from everybody else. Like Chase, it's a marketing campaign. It is. Like people see that gear, they go to the website. They don't see that gear, or it's in super limited supply, and then they go buy the the what's what is available. That's literally the 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 2021 equivalent of the thinker pose from from Vox. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally it's genius their marketing campaign on it literally everybody's like oh what is that that chase sexton has on i've never seen that before let me go to the website exactly yeah. what's your what's your thoughts brad who had the swaggiest sickest most drippiest setup i liked roxon at the second round when okay. he had the what the 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 black and the red yep. that was really that was like smooth. it it had some subtleties to it because it, it you could you you could pick him out right away when he was riding 
But then when he's on the podium, like he, there's a lot of stuff going on with that jersey that just, it looked really, really sharp. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the AC look. He had like it was a really busy jersey mm-hmm. and like the small Fox logos kind of all over the place. That was like I think could see some people being into that, but that wasn't my style. Uh, the like I'm usually a fan of team gear, but I haven't really loved the star guys so far. Like they're aside from white Alpine stars, which are the Buddha champions. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, every podium so far, I believe, has been Alpine star boots. Yeah, like literally. I like the black that they had with the the black door that had the the holographic door on it. That yeah. looks that good. was clean. That was clean. Yeah, the dark. That was at the last Houston. Uh, but yeah, all six winners so far have been in Alpine Star white boots. No big deal. Um, but I, honestly, I like the the all black look that I think Anderson ran the one night. Yeah, that was strong. Oh yeah, from the, from the Alpine Star stuff. That was like. You guys know I'm not like the the form fitting guy with the moto stuff. Like yeah. I'm not skinny enough for that. I'm not I'm not fat by any means, but like I look more like a middle linebacker. That's not a fantastic look for the, yeah. Um, kind of makes me look like I'm trying too hard. But aside from that, I liked it. It's what about you, Dave? Picks. You like, you have terrible taste in everything. <laughs> like you're you're gonna sit there and be like, Josh Greco looked fucking sick in his fucking <laughs> in his strict gear. Oh like, come on. Leave Greco out of this. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. He needs to stop you and stop wearing, like, I, like, can I buy gear? Can I, like, if I buy, like, some, like, eight sets, sets of shift gear or something like that, will Josh wear it to get him out of strict gear? He he might he might wear it for you, man. If you sweet talk him enough, I'm sure he'd wear it. <laughs> but I'm going to have to go with, um, I loved um, this seven stuff that Mookie had on, that, like, almost highlighter orange stuff that he had at I the last like round. The salmon? It was no, it wasn't salmon. It was it was like an orangey type of color. It was actually pretty cool. It it, it stood out, made the bike stand out a little bit, uh, yeah. a little bit nicer. When he was going Mach five through the whoops and see like, <laughs> see you later, Marv. And all you see is a is a streak of like orange going by. <laughs> um, I also liked. Um, I saw it. I was with the uh, the All South team. They had the new Fly Racing with the uh, the gray, the black, and the gold logo. I thought like that, that was actually pretty clean. What do you guys think of the LD gear from Fly? The white with like the mar- was it gold or maroon? Mm-hmm. It was okay. It was okay. Like, like I, they usually come out with more of a banger for their LE stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, they, they usually don't, like, release anything kind of, like, ho-hum. Yeah, that one was, really like, it missed yeah. the mark a little bit for me. I wasn't, I wasn't too stoked on it, but, you know, every, glad glad with the offerings that we were given. Um, all right, guys, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, this was a great recap of Houston. Guys, thank you again for the support. They don't give me enough time on this show. And, and sponsors. Um, be sure to share like and of course subscribe we're trying to get our subscriber count up uh, i want to say thank you very much to the Mr. notification Fresh. bell <laughs> yeah also ring the little bell brad is right um thank you to uh mr brad gebhardt of big mx radio um guys we're going to do this again after hopefully the next round please uh stay tuned for more stuff from, from the collective experience we're going to keep bringing you guys some cool content and keep you guys entertained all right. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Last Have quick shout out from night. me. Make sure everyone goes and checks out my podcast with Colt Nichols is being released on Wednesday, January 27th. Go cool. Check yeah, it definitely. Out. Check, check that out. I'll be listening too. I know many will. Um, it's it's going to be a good one as always with Brad. Um, guys, have a great night. Thanks so much for doing this and uh, we'll chat soon. All right. Later. Fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs>